Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Ontario Provincials checking in with 2056 Legendary OP Robotics. Two event wins already, also the Autonomous Award at both those as well too. So congratulations on our season. This is my favorite robot here uh, in this game period so far in Crescendo. So we're gonna be going through that full note journey, taking a look at a lot of great things. OP Robotics has always just built such a robust robot and a lot of great things that they go through as well too. So keep an eye out, let's dive in. There's so much to learn coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Danny, let's walk through this robot here. We're gonna be starting off with your uh, intake area. A lot of great things going on with that. Uh, walk me through what you're doing and why'd you go that route? For sure. So we went with an under the bumper intake because we wanted to keep it robust. Uh, with the open field like last year, we knew there would be a lot of heavy collisions. So under the bumper, nothing will get hit. We have a steel bar to help keep it straight and nothing will break. Uh, we have urethane rollers with 3D printed pulleys and timing belts. And as well, we have inverted swerve modules or motors so we can make the intake even wider to make picking up even easier. And then we have rollers on the side of the intake to help pick up notes better. And then this all hands off into the shooter just through a sushi roller powered by a motor. We're using Krakens this year, they're, they're great. Well, let's see that uh, note come in and then we're gonna hand it off the ball rush to talk more about the shooter. So let's go into the shooter and what you've been doing for that as well too. Uh, your shots have just been so spot on. It's so cool to watch this robot on the field. So walk me through uh, yeah, what absolutely. your shooter composition is uh, and then uh, anything in regards to the design and the implementation of it. So for the shooter, we didn't, uh, we saw a lot of teams had done the top and bottom. So we felt that was the best option for our shooter. And what we did iterate through is compression. So a lot of teams st started at half and we found five eighths was the sweet spot for us. And it's just two four-inch, uh, well, eight four-inch uh, Andy Mark Stealth wheels, powered by a Kraken with a double-sided timing belt. So what's cool about the double-sided timing belt is we can do a single path, and the two wheels can rotate in opposite directions. And then in the back, as uh, Daniel had spoke, we have uh, sushi rollers that feed the note into the shooter, and we found that this allows us to shoot from range with high accuracy. Like, we know a lot of side shooters and less compression shooters, they can't shoot from beyond the podium, but we wanted to shoot from, you know, at least partially, partially past the stage, stage light. So this worked really well. The construction of the shooter is a top and bottom plate made of polycarb with formed uh, aluminum C-channel. It's like almost like C-channel, made of one-eighth aluminum. And then this whole structure pivots on this gearbox over here. And like this is how we do our amp trajectory. So it's a single pivot, a single handoff, and it shoots directly into the amp. It's just extremely nice trajectory. And we almost never miss because there's nothing to bounce off, there's nothing to hit off of. And we have this really nice uh, low key for the robot name over here. Have you gone up against any like tall defenders or anything like that? Because I yes. would think with this type of arm, you're able to bypass a lot so, of defense. So what's really cool is from specific positions on the field, we can uh, set the arm angle to a high position. So you could do that. So right there, a four foot defender, we would shoot right over them if they were next to us. So even bump, almost bumper to bumper, we shoot right over them into the speaker. So that meant, under D, it gave it gives us a lot of opportunity in that case. And even the feeder roller is also a double-sided timing belt. And we took a lot of measures to eliminate backlash in this entire gearbox. Um, last year, we did a lot of similar stuff to make sure that our pivot was extremely precise and smooth. So. One of the other things I think has been great about your team as well too with that simplicity is your hanger is so simple uh, that you use for that. A zero second climb I think is so cool. So Steven, talk to me more about, uh, first off, like when you were analyzing this game, what made you come up with like, hey, this is the route we want to go. And then uh, of course we can break it down a little bit more too. At the start of the game, when we were initially coming up with robot designs, we found that if we were going to do a rotary hanger, we would probably have to put it on the end of our shooter which would put a lot more stress and use a lot more time 
uh, to hang. So if we went with a zero second climber, uh, we could climb at the end of the match and a very last second. Uh, we do that through using a single action solenoid. Um, so when it's powered, it will stay open. But as soon as we lose power, it will pull all the air out of the sol uh, pistons and drop the hanger down. Uh, we use one and a half uh, inch bore pistons for our hanger, as well as two hooks, one for solo climbing and one for uh, buddy climbing in order to get the Ensemble RP most efficiently. So with the way that you're going uh, at, you're, you're you know, essentially climbing at T equals zero right on there, uh, how many seconds before are you typically lining up to get that climb? Um, with uh, Buddy, we're probably lining up about five seconds before the end of the match, but if we're solo climbing, we can push that to as late as just driving into the chain. Um, and then looking at uh, this huge tank that you have here as well too, is, is this, Pneumatic setup only for your climber. This is the only pneumatic system on your robot. Oh uh, yeah. So we use the uh, metal cylinder because it holds the capacity of six um, of the regular past six cylinders, uh, but in the form factor of just two. Uh, we also just need all of the air to lift our robot off the ground. Lucas, let's talk about software a bit more on your robot. And uh, you know, as you look at you know OP robotics once again. Uh, I think everything in regards to uh, both mechanical and the software side is just really about efficiency and, and how you're able to do things so smoothly without getting too complex as well too. So walk me through uh, what your team is doing from software, maybe some of the feedback you're getting as well. Yeah, totally. So first one, which is probably one of my favorite features, is actually our note tracking, which we then use for two separate things. One is to adjust the position of the robot to more easily pick up the note. And the second piece is during auto, when we can use that to tell if there's a note there or not. Uh, the second part of that is the April tag tracking, where we can then determine a distance away from the April tag or the speaker, and then adjust our arm position for that to be able to accurately shoot the note. And then looking at, uh, you know, for, for your team, when you were getting ready for Provincials, any major changes that you made from that software side coming here or anything maybe for World Championships you might be eyeing up too? Yeah, so for World Championship, uh, we're gonna have to play through the event more maybe see from that. But the biggest one uh, between McMaster and now were really auto changes and just improving and refining those to, the, to be the best they possibly can. Well, Irish, let's wrap up on this robot here. Talk to me about uh, some of your LED feedback that you have as well, too, and then anything else in regards to control software that you want to cover. Um, so when we're on the field, um, it's behind the glass. It's really hard to see the robot, especially with the stage in the way, especially with the other teams in the way. So one of the coolest things we have on the robot is LEDs. We've done this for a bunch of years, and it's mainly for driver feedback. So we have a bunch of different colors. So yellow will be note pickup. Um, we will have other... Uh, LED such as red when it's not ready to shoot and blue when it's ready to shoot. So this is intake and we'll spin up. We'll have red and blue for shooting. We will also have uh, different LEDs in the disabled mode so we can check our sensors. We have two beam brakes, uh, one for the shooter, one for the intake, and those fl flash different colors when broken in the disabled period. Um, more about our controllers. So. Uh, as many teams know, we only have one driver and we have two HPs this year. Um, we felt this was a necessity going into this season because we want to cover as much of the field ourselves as possible. So we have bars at the source and we have Daniel at the amp. But this ensures that we optimize how much we're doing as a team without relying on other people too, too much, which means we only have one controller. So in the past, we've been using Logitech controllers, but now we are using Fusion 3 Pros. So those are these controllers. Um, these ones have back buttons, which gives us four additional buttons as well to all the face buttons, which really allow just for more driver input. So not having a second controller, um, it doesn't affect us as much because we have these extra buttons. We also have this little monitor setup, which uh, in previous years, we've used another giant laptop just to display the same thing. But we felt this was a better idea this year as a small screen and you just look up, glance at it, and um, you can keep playing the match. This is our, this is for our game piece and our April tag one is down here. This is our dashboard. This displays all the information we need in case something goes wrong, in case we're looking at states. Um, another cool thing we have on the controller is a rumble feature. So what we use it for is when we pick up a piece and 
The shooter beam break is broken. The controller will rumble for, uh, I think it's 300 milliseconds, which really just, if, you, if it's completely blind and you can't see the lights, you can at least feel something, which lets the driver know you have a piece and you can keep coming back. Uh, we changed a lot of LED lighting because we felt we need to optimize this to the best potential. So before, we'd have a state in between where the uh, LEDs will flash white when you have a piece and then go solid white. But now we've skipped the flashing white state and just went straight to the solid white state. And this is what we think works best. Well, OP Ramash, congratulations on a phenomenal season so far. We can't wait to see how you do here at Provincials as well, too. But what a fantastic robot. Thanks for being such an inspiration to the first community. And we can't wait to see what you do. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button on any YouTube video to pledge your support.